Good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy Wednesday to you guys. I pray that you all had a Merry Christmas. I pray that you all received a sweet sleep last night, woke up with bells and whistles on, ready to take on this new day. For it is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We beseech you, O oh Father, save now, send prosperity now. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hey there, Heartbeat Nicole. Hey there, Heartbeat Eva. Hey there, Heartbeat Melodia. Hey there, Heartbeat Troy. Hey, Heartbeat Lisa. Hey there, Heartbeat Belinda. Hey there, Heartbeat Alice. Good morning, good morning, good morning to you all. Welcome to the Gathering of Hearts on this morning. I am Regina Banks, your GPS, the wholeness, aka I'm the heart gatherer. And this morning, your daily dosage is pruning is a reward. Pruning is a reward. Hey, heartbeat Elaine, heartbeat Donald, heartbeat Anita, good morning. And so if you know anything about gardening, if you know anything about pruning, um, you know that sometimes you have to cut back the dead branches. You have to cut back the dead leaves. Hey there, heartbeat Lish. You have to cut those things back. Sometimes you cut them back so far, it looks as if there's nothing left. But if you wait and give it time, you'll see that those flowers, whatever it is that you are pruning or that the landscape is, is pruning, you'll find that they bounce back better than ever. And it all um, came like that because of pruning. Well, sometimes you and I need pruning as well. Sometimes we need to get rid of the dead weight, just like that landscape has had to knock off some of the branches that aren't fruitful anymore. Sometimes God has to prune us so that we will look more like him, so that we can soar, so that we can be our best. And so John 15, 1 and 2, and I'm going to be reading this out of the voice translation. And here we have amongst the last conversations and the teachings that Jesus extended to the disciples before um, his death. And it says this, it says, I am the true vine and my father is the keeper of the vineyard. My father examines every branch in me and cuts away those who do not bear fruit. He leaves those bearing fruit and carefully prunes them so that they will, will bear more fruit. Hey there, Harpy Rodney, Harpy Carol, and Harpy Cliff. And so we see here that Jesus is teaching the disciples and he's telling them that there's going to come a time that you're going to need pruning. And then what happens is God does this. He cuts away everything in your life that is not fruitful. However, those things that are fruitful, he prunes them, he cuts them, he molds them, he shapes them so that they can blossom even the more. And so, you know, I don't know how you felt about pruning before this stream started, but I want you to switch your brain and know that pruning is not a bad thing, that actually pruning is a reward. You know, sometimes when we are chastised, corrected by God or corrected by God through another individual, we take that as a bad thing. You know, that self-condemnation takes place. We want to go in a corner and we want to hide, but we want to understand, we need to switch our brain and understand this, that God only corrects those that he loves. And anytime correction comes your way, anytime pruning comes your way, it is a reward. It is to make you better. And But we've been bamboozled for so long and we go into that self-condemnation and the guilt and the shame. And that's nothing but another trick of the enemy. And so in these last days of 2023, I want you to be open that you will allow God to prune you. That when the Holy Spirit speaks to you, that you would listen, that you would make the change. Because there is still time in this year for God to do the speck while amazing in your life. So pruning, it is a reward from God. It enhances spiritual growth by removing everything that was inhibiting your growth. Verse five of this same chapter says this, I am the vine and you are the branches. If you abide in me 
and I in you, you will bear great fruit. Without me, you will accomplish nothing. And so here we have, if you stay connected to the vine, if you make the necessary changes, hey, Harvey Carolyn, Harvey Juanita, if you make the necessary changes that I'm directing you to, then you're going to have great success. But if you allow yourself to be torn away from me, if you allow yourself not to abide in me, which means that you're going in your own direction, which means you're taking control of your life, remembering now though that when you gave your life to Christ your life is no longer yours you belong to God so when you make a conscious intentional decision that I'm not going to follow God that I think I know a little bit more than God does about my life and I'm going to handle things this way he says this when you break away from the vine when you break away from the source you have nothing coming and so I want you to switch your brain and understand on this morning, regardless of how you thought about it in the past, that pruning is a reward. God prunes us as an act of love towards us. That's the first thing I want you to understand about pruning. As an act of love for us, God prunes us, which means this. He does not want us to stay the way that we are. He wants us to look more like him, like his father spoke back in Genesis, that you would be made in my image. So the pruning God does for you is spiritual good. It helps you reflect more of his character and it is a necessary part of the Christian life. I'm going to say that again, that this pruning thing, it helps you now exhibit more of his characteristics. Characteristics, And so now you're no longer acting like you. You're no longer acting like Juanita. You're no longer acting like Eva. You're no longer acting like Nicole. You're no longer acting like Yolanda, but you're now acting like the Yolanda and the Nicole and the Juanita and the Eva that is made in the image of God, which means now Regina, Eva, Juanita, that, that, that person is unrecognizable because now you look more like Christ. This is what God does in the, in the process of pruning. It is an act of love from him. He's showing us just how much he loves us by saying this, I don't want you to look like that anymore. You look too much like the world, but I made you in my image and I want you to look like me. I want you to sound like me. I want you to talk like me. I want you to respond like me. And so get this, pruning is a reward. It is an act of love from God. It, it, it helps you reflect him in all that you do. Proverbs 3.12 says this, the Lord corrects those he loves just as a father corrects a child in whom he delights. And so when you are receiving correction from God, you've got to know that he loves you, that he's like, that's my child and I want my child to get this thing right. And so again, pruning is a reward. So God is never angry at us. You know, the enemy, the world wants us to think that when we are corrected by God, that God is angry. God isn't angry at us when he prunes us. When he prunes us, he said, no, I love you and I want you to look more like me. I want you to stop doing this and I want you to stop doing that and I want you to put this down and I want you to put that down, but I want you to pick this up. I want you to start doing this and here's the real good thing that he's not depending on you to do it alone. He knows that everything that you're doing, that you can do it because you're doing it in his strength and so let's kick the enemy in the head on this morning and switch our brain, no longer thinking that it's all us, but understanding that we have the weight, we have the, the, the uh, background of having rooting for us and that we're not in this thing alone, but we're doing it in God's strength. And so the understanding that now pruning is a reward. Pruning shows me that God loves me. It is an act of his love that he does not want me to be the same person, but he wants me to get to the better. He wants me to get to the bigger that he has for me. And so God prunes us as an act of love towards us. And so we've got to remember that, that he prunes us as an act of love towards us. Number two, let me see how much time I have before I keep moving. Number two, 
God prunes us to produce spiritual growth that will cause you to be more like him. And if you've been hanging out with me on Sunday mornings, we've been talking about spiritual formation, how it is available to all of us to be more like Jesus. And so this pruning strength is not only your character, but it strengthens your faith. Why? Because you're no longer thinking like you. You're not depending on you to do anything, but you're depending on God. See Romans 5, 3 through 5, and I'm going to read it if I have time in both translations, the New King James Version and the Passion Translation. And here, Paul is encouraging the believers to trust God, to trust God even in the bad times, even during the hard times, even in the midst of pain, God is refining us. And this is what he's encouraging. And so it starts, it says this, and not only that be And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulations produces perseverance and perseverance character and character hope. Now, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. And so this pruning allows God to show up big in your life. And I know we don't like suffering. I know we don't like the pain, but the pain is the thing that is working it out in you. The pain is the thing that is strengthening you. The pain is the thing that is strengthening your faith. The pain is the thing that is changing your character because when you're going through a painful moment, you do nothing but reach out for God. See, here it is. When you're at your most painful moment, you're already down. The only place you can go is up. Glory to God. You can't go no further down than you are, but it's a painful um, situation. It's a painful circumstance, but it's in that pain that God is able to work those things out of you. It is in that pain. It is in that suffering that God is able to prune you and make you more like him. The passion translation says it like this. It says, but that's not all. Even in times of trouble, we have a joyful confidence knowing that our pressures will develop us patient endurance. And so just like the diamond, you know, a diamond, we love them. They sparkle, but they go through a process before we see that sparkle, before we see that glimmer. They come out of dirt. They come out of a volcano. They, you know, they have to be clean. They have to be carved. They have to be pruned. They have, you know, they're selected. The best ones are selected. And so it says this, knowing that our pressures will develop us patient endurance and patient endurance will refine our character and prove and character lead us back to hope. Verse 5, and this hope is not a disappointing fantasy because we can now experience the endless love of God cascading into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who lives in us. When we allow God to prune us, the Holy Spirit is able to do what it does. The Holy Spirit is able to lead. The Holy Spirit is able to guide. The Holy Spirit is able to to comfort. The Holy Spirit is able to um, be your cheerleader and encourage you. See, the Holy Spirit is now able to cascade into your heart, which means this, God is in control. You no longer are. And you know what? What? You no longer have a desire to be. You no longer want to be in control of your life. You want God to take the will and you now want to follow. This is what happens when we allow God to prune us. Pruning is a reward. It makes you better. It allows you to experience the new you. If you've been hanging out with me for a while, I've told you that I like the new me. I like this Regina that depends on God. I like this Regina. Gina that pauses and waits to hear what the Holy Spirit has to say. You begin to love you in a different way because now you're in the image of God. Life is different for you. Now you you understand what faith really is that you now see past your now. So I know that the situation that I'm in is temporary and guess what? When I'm in a painful situation, it's just an opportunity 
opportunity for God to show his glory. And now I begin to praise. I begin to worship. You chose me. You wanted to use me to get the glory out of my life. See, I now understand pruning is a reward. And so I won't think the same. I won't act the same. I won't even, you know, say the same things. Why? Because I've allowed God to change my life right before my eyes. That is what pruning is all about. Do not, do not be bamboozled by the world. Do not even be bamboozled by your past thinking that pruning is, is a bad thing from God. Switch your brain on this morning and understand that pruning is a reward. Hey, listen, that's the daily dosage for today. Pruning is a reward. We'll pick this right back up on tomorrow and continue on in all of the reasons that I'm going to show you why pruning is a reward for you. I want you to switch your brain in these last days of this year. It is still time for God to do the impossible in your life, but you've got to continue to believe. If you have not subscribed to the YouTube channel already, please do so because there you can find all of your dosages in one place. Follow me on social media platforms. God wants me whole. Visit the website. God wants me whole.org. You know how we do this thing. Come on, let's say it together. Say God wants me whole. And I am, again, I'm Regina Banks, your GPS, the wholeness, a.k.a. I'm the heart gatherer. I love you guys a bunch. Go out there. Have a spec while amazing day. Look out for falling blessings because they are falling all around you. And remember, there is no walking in wholeness Wednesday tonight. I want you to continue to enjoy your families during this holiday season. And I'll be right back here tomorrow morning at 7.30 a.m. continuing on on in. Pruning is a reward. I love you guys and I'll see you in the morning.